the Bernard Brogan podcast and OTB Sports with Super Value. The stands may be silent, but supporting where you're from has never been so important. Super Value supporting the GAA All Ireland Football Championship for over 11 years, bringing you the best of GAA conversations. How are you doing? You're very welcome to the Bernard Brogan podcast on OTB Sports, and um, brought to you by Super Value, proud sponsors of the Championship 2020. For my very first guest, I'm delighted to say I have my pal, Ty Canelli on the line. Hi, Ty. Berna, how are you, boy? I am good. Uh, how are things? Good, good. Um, it's You're... not meant to come in my kitchen, uh, the other side of the world, and uh, you know, crazy times, but good. We're You're alive, looking... we're healthy. You're looking well. You're looking fit. You're still doing a bit of training, I see. Oh, why wouldn't I? Come on, <laughs> man, you know, my, you know my ego. Can't let myself go. Uh, Looking like bronze, come here. Yeah. Uh, might start coming back soon, I'd say, you know. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> Looking good. Come here, before we get into it, I'm gonna yeah, talking about ego. Um Kerry boys, two of your AFL guys battled out at the end with Tommy and uh and Mark and uh I'd say you're sad to see um Kerry falling down in a year that they would have probably had good aspirations. You can't start the podcast with this man. <laughs> I want oh, to get out of the way and be done with it because I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk about. <laughs> yeah, disappointing, man. You know, just ah, oh, they probably took him a small bit lightly. You 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 think you know, and they were a better team, just didn't get it done. And uh, the way it finished, you know, and Tommy, you know, it's just it's hard to take. And he's worked his backside off to get him back in there, Tommy. You know, and he's playing well and everything he's done. You know, since he's got back, and uh, yeah, it's hard to stomach. You know, mm-hmm. people don't understand, man. Well, you you will, but people don't understand how much of a hatred there is between Kerry and Cork. It's it's if if they were if we it's the only team Kerry Kerry people are good at in sport is Gaelic football against Cork. They're better than everything else in sport, as far as Olympians, as far as hurling, as far as whatever it is. But we've got them in football, and it's 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 when they get us in football, um, it's hard to it take. You know, there's a rivalry there that's, that's yeah. insane. But that rivalry always brings it down to a level playing field, doesn't it? It always makes that battle always that bit tighter than on form, on paper. Kerry are, are a different standard, but I suppose the weather and the conditions make it just even up, don't they? It is, man. And look, you know what? And, and that's what makes it. I think that's what makes you know. You're going back now to the format of the championship, you know, which was was quite exciting. Obviously, you know, when we were growing up, and um, you know, you knew there was Kerry Cork. Obviously, most of the final the majority of the time, obviously, in Linster was. You know, the Dublin meet and, um, you know, you go out west to Connacht and, and that, that one day, you know, whether it was in Parky Keeve or, or Fitzgerald Stadium, um, it was huge in the calendar and, and, and it came back to that a small bit, you know, the younger generation now coming through with the same the effects of, well, that's it, one game, you're gone, see you later, you know, and it makes it even harder to stomach, you know, if it was, if it was, you know, last year, I didn't know, I thought probably Kerry would go on to win the All-Ireland because of the result, mm. but they don't get the chance now, do they? Yeah, it's it's a it's a bitter it's a bitter uh, championship this year. It's a, it, it's it's do or die, which makes it interesting. You've seen a couple of upsets, and, and it will make interesting watching for us to have a bit of sport later into the into the into the winter. But before, yeah, that's enough kind of talk about Kerry and their and their challenges. But um, how are things going in Sydney for off all of us over here? We haven't chatted to you in a while. Um, I know we couldn't get post across to our loved ones in, into into Australia for a while. But how, how have things been there? It's. We 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 had it's been untouched really. We're like in, in another planet here compared to what's happening in the rest of the world, you know. Um, everything's going on. Uh, initially, when it happened, like it was, you know, we were like everyone else just shut down, and um, we basically the country here they closed the border, like, and there was no one in and out of the country, and it it pretty much saved the country from from you know second cases and second outbreaks, and um, you know we're able to here survive on our own, you know, mm. uh, because we're so far away and the country's got a lot of money behind it, so. Um, uh, there's small breakouts every now and then, you know. But Melbourne was the only one that, when Melbourne got hit, they basically closed the borders of Melbourne. Like it'd be like closing, you know, the, the Leinster border, and no one's allowed up into Dublin, and that's it. Or no one's allowed out of Dublin, they, and they closed it to protect wow. the rest of the country. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they've done some drastic measures, but again, they've got the money to do it, you know. And, yeah. Um, even now, like to leave, you know, to, for me to go home, this is the longest time actually I've never gone back home. You know, it's, yeah. it's been a, I've been here twenty years. Um, you just don't know if you can come back in because there's only 300 people allowed into the country a day. Wow. And they get they're they're driven straight to a hotel and put into quarantine for two weeks. 
So it's yeah. um yeah, it's, it's a strange world, you know. But we're surviving here. Like there's people going to sport, like the grand finals one two weeks ago, you know, there was 35, 40,000 people at it because they've they've done well to manage it, you know. So things are going as normal, which is good. How are, they, are you seeing much of the uh, the Irish abroad there? How are they getting on? The, the young guys and girls that went across work and stuff are they coping all right? Do you think? Uh, they are. I, I, it's just it's it's just how I, I feel sorry. You know, a friend of mine, if something happens at home, you know, and you can't to you can to get back. No, you can leave like you know, but coming back in, you're not too sure you're gonna actually get back in. Um, yeah. And that's the issue. Like what they're doing is they're issuing airline tickets for people. Like, but. Um, you get to the say you go home and um, you spend a couple of weeks at home or whatnot, and you get to say Dublin Airport, and um, sorry, uh, you can't come in. You're not one of the 300 people loaded in today into into Australia, and you got to go back and rebook a ticket, and you don't know when you're going to get back in. So um, there's something like 30,000, now 28,000 Australians that can't come back home because that's the way they're, they're doing it at the minute. Wow. So um, the, the area is like I, the pubs are open, you know, bars are open. Um, there's lots of barbecues and, and, and parties, outdoor gatherings. Now there's, you're allowed to have 30 people. Um, you know, if music venues have started to open up the last couple of weeks, so um, I was in an Irish bar not too long ago. So that's um, good. I remember in um, 2011, I think I did a, I did a stint over there with you. And Coogee Bay Hotel, I think you, you brought us to for a few points. Then you brought us to some fancy place in Sydney, and we were way over depth. I was I was, I was traveling the coast with uh, a rucksack, and you were there with all the AFL guys. Swan around the place, but um, how's all the how's all your your colleagues? Are you still staying in touch? How's Goodsy having the? Yeah, yeah, they're good, boy. They're good. Like, um, it's it's funny in a way because of the less travel here, you know, Australian people love to travel also. You know, I love to go away and when a lot of people are actually around, and there's lots of us catching up regularly. You know, to the the mice and my uh, my wife and three children. I'm um, probably catching up too much with them, but you know, you're you're out and about and. Um, because people aren't, aren't flying anywhere, aren't leaving, you know, most people are hanging around Sydney or they're around and there's lots of catching up. But yeah, it is that we've actually reconnected an awful lot more probably this year than ever, the, 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 the Swannies boys. Um, um, and funnily enough, we've just got a lunch coming up actually in the next couple of days, which is going to be a, a big a big gathering. But it is, uh, you can hold your own too, Burn up by the don't worry about Adams, don't worry about, <laughs> don't worry about the Coogee Bay and all, come on. I know, no, yeah. we, we're, we're just we're looking forward to those then. <laughs> we're looking forward to getting back out with our with our, with our friends and uh, and families and stuff for a few points. We're 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 locked down fairly fairly hard here, but um, yeah. To bring it back to, obviously we we know each other a long time. Um, both been reared in in Listowel, and for those who don't know, um, obviously a big big part of my heart and played a lot of played a lot of uh, football down the down the backfield um, and down the back lane, that uh, uh, where my granny and granddad's house was, um. The stole to you, um, and what, what, what did it mean to you growing up? I know it was a big part of you playing with the Emmets. Obviously, I, I went down to watch you several times, uh, and I love going down there in, uh, in the summers. It was a big part. Home was a big part for you, wasn't it? Yeah, huge, man. It's like I suppose you're you're the one person I suppose you can probably um, relate to this in a small way with with, with, you, with your father. You know, um, watching you know we watched Kerry Gold in years, but um, you know it was something that. The town itself has is, is, is got such a meaning towards everything that I've ever done, you know, it's because and even coming back out here or coming out here to play, you know, it was it was a lot of the driving force for me was to, to not go back to the stall having um, not played one game of AFL football because I, I would have felt I'd left the town down, you know. Um, no, I love Kerry and I love love Ireland, obviously, but it was all the stall. It was going. It was always that make the town proud, um, make your, your parish where you come from extremely, extremely proud, you know. And um, and that's the stall. Like the stall is just a great town, some great people, great support, you know. And, and it's struggling at the moment, you know. There's, there's business closing and whatnot, and everything that's going on. But my youth was was a, a absolute joy. Mm-hmm. Jesus, you know. Sorry, but you know, spend the time with my, my brother and um, my my friends just kicking the ball that's what i did i was outside you know um spent the majority of the time outside playing sport and yeah. um it was soccer or football but it was the love of the town you know that really drove me off a lot to a lot of my my stuff that i did in my career really bernard it was yeah. that's where i learned my trade you know you talk about people turning on professional you know, it was a different sport but there's a lot of similarities but that's where i learned my my craft was 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 at home in the stall Playing against my friends, with my friends, up against the gable, ended up in the pub. You know, that's that's. Yeah. 
And I get asked this question a lot about the, like, the, the legacy in your dad playing before and obviously your late dad play, play, been a legend of, of, of Kerry. How much do you think, like, like look at the Brogans, look at Dean Rock and Barney, you look at yourself and your dad, you look at Tommy Walsh, you look at even the Spillans, Adrian Spillan and, and Tom Spillan. What, does that make somebody a different person or what, how has that helped or how does that help us, I suppose, I lived through it as well, but what's your answer to that when people ask you about your heritage and your legacy and, and did that make you become a footballer? Did that drive you down that path to play GEA or, or AFL? You know, a lot of people say it, you know, we, we used to joke around myself and my brother, you know, whenever we were coming through, you know, I say 16, 17, 18, you know, and minors and whatnot, you know, and it'd always been the paper, you know, son of the legendary Tim Kennelly, and we, we'd joke with the father, you know, that people would, he'd be long forgotten if it wasn't for his two sons consistently putting his name in the newspaper, you know, and um, I, I loved it, you know, people might say you're living in the shadow of your dad and whatnot, but I never once thought of it like that at all, you know, I, I suppose it was like majority young men, you know, you, you, you idolise your father and if your dad was a butcher, well, guess what, you're probably going to be a butcher, if your dad was a doctor, well, you're probably going to be a doctor, but the fact of the matter is my father was a, a, a captain for Curry and won five all Ireland medals, so um, that's what I wanted to do, you know, and, 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 and Noah was no different and, and we loved it, you know, we loved the fact that, um, you know, he was he was such a popular guy and, and, and the influence he had in us as, as a forwarder, but he's just your dad, you know, if, if we didn't see him as Tim Kennelly, the legendary footballer, he was he was dead and, and I'd tell him to piss off every now and then and we'd have a fight and we'd run, he'd chase after me and, and and he'd try and tell me what to do and how to play the game properly or why didn't I do this in the game and I'd just, you know, turn my back on him and because that's what you do with your with your dad, you know, and that's um and I, I do think the fact that I, I basically spent my childhood in a dressing room because that's where dad was and I was his shadow, you know, and, and my brother was, you know. And you, you learn the intricacies of of football very quickly yeah. and you're around it all the time and in every conversation you're in it's it's Gaelic football because he loved it so much and and we were following him and that that's a big strength I think when young fellas are coming through and obviously the you know, the bloodlines and whatnot is part of it but um the ability side of it but I think that it does help being around you know dressing rooms and, and the game all the time yeah it gives you that bit of extra fight maybe that to, to, to keep us with it I suppose and maybe that's why we, we, we hung on to it for so long but obviously coming home was a, was a big part I know you've told a story before but in 2009 when you came home and leaving obviously a very successful um, AFL career with, a, with, a, with an amazing team uh, in the sun what was, the, what was your reflecting back on it, your motives in 2009 was it to just obviously Kerry had went through a couple of uh, a bit successful years, the three or four All Irelands in the decade, was it just what you wanted a piece of it, or, or was it what was home calling you? What was their main motive for yeah. coming home? I it really was my, my father passed away, Bernard. You know, I always thought I'd go back. You know, I see Conor McKinn at the moment. You know, he's come back home and he's. Um, he, I always knew, you know, within myself that I was going to go back at some stage, yeah, you know, and, and and try and try and play for Kerry. Um, and, and and dad passed away then suddenly, you know, and it kind of just sped that process up. Now, that was in the 2005, and I didn't go back to 2009, but yeah. I, came, I came back out in 2006 and 7 and played. And I picked up a couple of bad injuries in the 2007 and 8 season, and I went, oh, if I don't do it now, you know, I'm not going to not going to get a chance to actually mm. be at my best and, and, and be able to offer what I want to be able to offer. And I was pushing on towards 30, and mm. um, I decided then, you know, it was kind of, but now was the time I was getting injured, and it, it was a lot of it was to you know to to, like I said before, I grew up wanting to play for Kerry, and, um, and I think as a Lestone man and a Kerry man, you, it's 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 you're, you're not even getting football until you win an Ireland medal in Kerry, um, and probably some people will say five five or six of them, but that's yeah. a Dublin thing now, isn't it? Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but that's that's what it is, you know. You're expected to 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 win all Irelands, and and you know, and, and that was probably. You know, it was, it was a, a thing I wanted, a bucket I wanted to have a crack at. And, and um, the whole process probably sped up at that stage with, with, with Dad passing away so suddenly and then the injuries. Yeah. And, um, you know, and I, I had two years to go on a contract and I left it, you know. I was, yeah. uh, as my wife says, it's probably the worst financial decision <laughs> of my life. Yeah, but it shows, so, yeah, it show, shows what matters <laughs> to you, you know. It, show, it shows, uh, in fairness to you, yeah, you came and, and like, like, like you always do, you... You're like a cat. You always fall on your feet. You come home for one year and you get the All Ireland done. Um, you, 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 you're the look of the Irish. It wasn't easy, man. Jeez, it wasn't easy. Like I, I actually thought it'd be easier, you know, because I played the international rules, you know, nearly every year, nearly every second year, you know, and um, I felt like, you know, that 
I was well able for you know the best. And I, I generally done that because I, I consistently wanted to see where I was at myself with the top range Gaelic footballers in the country. So and I played it a lot when I should, probably shouldn't have played a couple of times and through injuries. But I wanted to play to see where I was at and was I still up to it? You know, and was I still able to? keep going with the best in the country you know and, yeah. um, and because I was able to it used to give me confidence to go right okay I'm not I'm okay now I'm, I'm okay with the, this level kind of I'm not I don't need to rush to get back and all that kind of thing and that, that helped a small bit my confidence to go back but it wasn't easy boy it wasn't easy you know I'd spent 10 years kicking an oval ball like yeah I, the, the natural habits of you know, of doing something was 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 becoming unnatural again the, the Gaelic football and um, I remember going back and uh, I, I just I'd struggle, man, to kick to, to kick the wrong ball. I never thought I'd say it, you know. And um, and, and it was you know what my brother said to me, and, and he said he said this to me. He goes, do you "Remember when we were young for this? What we used to do?" And uh, I said, "Yeah, what?" And he goes to me, "The side of the pub, man. We used to just kick the ball off it like nonstop." And do you know what I did? I I was working with the Kerry GA helping out the schools, you know. And I'd finish you know, at two or three o'clock, and down in the handball area in the stall. There I was, man. Started kicking the ball non-stop, non-stop. Yeah. I'm nearly 30 years of age, kicking the ball right foot, left foot, outside the boot. And within two weeks, man, I had it back. My technique yeah. of, you know, I never thought of it like that. Yeah, that you lose the lose the kind of the finesse or the touch. You know, uh, Conor McKenna, how we impressed. I'm sure you watched a bit of the the GA, how he came back into the round ball and really impressed as if he, as if he'd been kicking a, his whole life, as you say. He must you must have been impressed with his standard of uh, of skills in the game. Yeah. He's still very young too, you know, Connor. And um, I'd almost probably left it too long, you know. I'd like I said, I'd been ten years away from it, you know. Mm-hmm. And Connor is still relatively young in, in in age and 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 being away from playing Gaelic football. But a uh, freak, absolute freak, you know. Um, he's got a great temperament too, Connor. You know, he's got that temperament that he can take on the world and nothing nothing can break him. And and you know, the more he fails, the harder he's going to actually try and and and, and try and beat it, you know. So. He's he, he's going to be a star for a long time yeah. at home. Yeah. Um, in 2009, yeah. when you came back, I'm going to ask you a, a question here. I remember Alan saying to me, my brother, he was obviously good pals with yourself and Mark O'Shea and over the years, and he said to me one day, he said, I, I said, the lads are they're, they're great lads, and obviously we have a great offer, Kerry, Kerry men and Kerry in general, so we'd always have met massive respect for all of the players and yourself included, but Alan said to me one day, sure, it's easy for those lads to be nice to us and have a few points with us and and bring us out for a few points around the stall. He says when they're hammering us every day or every game time we play. When you came back in 2009, what did you think of that Dublin team? Obviously, that the Dublin team hadn't hadn't won any All Irelands. But in your head, you're honest, kind of in that in that thought process. What was your thought on on a Dublin team? Always that there was the talent was there, but just couldn't get it together. Mm. You know, it was it was there was Jesus. You look at the listen. You know, a lot better than I do, Bernard. Like the players that didn't win All Ireland medals. Um, and and just couldn't have the ability to actually um, come together and play as, as a unit. Um, always respected Dublin. I think probably goes back to a lot of you know obviously my father's days and whatnot, and, and, and knowing you guys and people from Dublin that we know. But um, I, I just think w- we knew that they couldn't play together as a team. Um, and if you just keep going at them, you, that you you break them because they just didn't have that unity that you need really in the last quarter of a you know an All Ireland semi final final quarter final because you know they just had been doing it for the you know, 10 12 years before that really and, and that was that was the mindset of it you know I'll, I'll never forget this man in the in the in the, the lead up to to the, to the draw to, against against you guys for the quarter final in 2009 we're on the train back from uh Tullamore and we we uh, we we snuck a, a win against Sligo penalty um Dave Kelly missed and um David Murphy made a great save from Tralee and we went to Antrim and played Antrim and um and we snuck, we snuck a win, and then we're on the train back, and the draw comes through that we're playing Dublin in the quarterfinal. And I tell you, the atmosphere in that train changed like instantly with a focus that I'd never seen before. It was, I was, and I was in the in the in the camp going, oh man, this is not good. You know, we're struggling to get over the slide on Antrim, and it's only a matter of time before we're out. With the, the fact that we got the Dublin draw in the All Ireland quarter final, no info park was what won us the All Ireland really. Mm. You know, I think if we genuinely, if we got you know Cork, if we got um, you know, 
another county, I don't think we would have won the game and we wouldn't have won the All Ireland. I think it was Dublin and Crow Park and the quarter final changed the psyche and the focus of that whole group. You got to remember that group had won a lot of All Irelands yeah. too. Bernard's yeah. like, you know, in yeah. Irish had five All Irelands and six, like, the boys had plenty of All Irelands and um, they were very tired. And I yeah. think that oh, once that came, just refocused the whole thing and, and off we went. And you think that was it? There was there was a lot of miles in that in that team's legs. Obviously, <clears throat> Dublin in 2010, where it was a different, it was a start of a new mm. era for Dublin. What do you think changed in Dublin or, and, and similar again in Kerry uh, over the next 10 years, I suppose? I think Dublin just got it together, man. I think you got it together from, 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 you've always had the development structure in place, you know? Mm. Um, I just think you probably got it, you've got it together. You're, you're at the top end, at the mm. pointy end of, of, of what it means to play for, for, for a team. And, um, I see the Dublin team now that are almost a mirror image of what we've done as a football club out here for the Swans. Mm. Um, the, the, the team ethos, your standards, behaviours, expectations, the leadership qualities that we talk about, and we've been doing it here for 15 years. Um, it's almost carbon copy now when I see Dublin and when I hear the language coming out of the team, the language coming out of the management. It's, it's carbon copy of, uh, you know, wow. the All Blacks. Yeah, one. Yeah. It's, um, and it's something I've known for a long time here. You know, and um, it, we when I was playing in 2000, I came in 2000, you know, and, and the club was a basket case. But um, the head coach Paul Roos took over in 2000, half to, halfway through 2000, 2003, and just basically changed the very fabric of the club through um, through those standards and expectations and and, and your language and, and and the way we dealt with um, each other and behaviours and what was expected, not expected, and um, and 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 that way we were able to get success. And and it just it makes you feel like you belong to something that's more important, you know. Yeah. as a player and as a person in a football club and, and when you get that and when you get players thinking well this is bigger than who I am and, and, and playing together you get what you get with your results you know it's no yeah. surprise Dublin being able to do what they've been able to do Yeah and it was interesting I chatted to um, Donaghy Kieran there uh, a couple of weeks ago and he was he was quizzing me on obviously I released a book and he was asking me a couple of things that he nuggets he found around the mindset and the professionalism and that cultural piece that we really you say it all there that's exactly the, the, the mentality that we were going after with Dublin um, of a culture of, of creating something more and bigger than yourself and he was kind of saying to, he kind of was pointing at the fact that maybe Kerry especially at the end of 09 didn't maybe have that and did you see that when coming back from a professional group into 09 I know he got the job done but did you see yeah. see inklings of that and is that what's is that what has maybe held him up over the last 10 years yeah I think so um you know what's surprising? You know, I think in, that, in the 2000s, you know, in that era, with Kilkenny winning so many All-Irelands, I, I honestly think Dublin, uh, Kerry underachieved, mm. you know, and, and, and Kerry won All-Irelands. But, um, you know, underachieved as far as they could achieve more from mm. from, from the, the mindset mentality of we're unbeatable and, and, and should have went and won All-Irelands. Mm. Um, and, and I genuinely think that, uh, and a lot of people say that it's a bit of a, you know, a couple considering they won uh, all Ireland's and good dogs. And but I do you know you think Kerry should have won more all Ireland's in that 12, 13 year period, you know, and there was no reason they couldn't have done what Kilkenny are doing or what, what Dublin are doing right now. And I think it goes back to that mindset, you know, there's still it, the, the, in fact, the fabric of Kerry training was it was ruthless boy. It was at each other for spots and places and uh, it was almost like the raw talent won won games of football, then the actual the whole team perspective. Um, at times, you know, um, whereas, and that that's that's un unique in itself to be able to win all arms and do that because of the actual, but the talent was there, and it's a seriously talented teams in the two thousands and whatnot that Kerry had. But I think if there was that mindset and the, um, that group and that that whole togetherness, it would have been a, a lot more successful. And 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 it just wasn't there. And I think a lot of it's probably going back to the the A V. A versus B training games that we used to do the Sunday before, two weeks before a championship game was out of control. I played harder games in Killarney in training than I did in any championship game that I played that year. Mm. And that's the God honest truth. You know, you, there was no championship game that was as hard as, as yeah. some of those A, B, yeah. A versus B. I've been there, yeah, and absolutely. That, that doesn't build team camaraderie, you know? Mm. That builds a bit of friction. And, and, and you know, your, your talent can come through, you know, but for continued and long success and, and, and cultural success that you know and, and, and legacies that you're talking about, you really do need that that, that bonding and that, that, that closeness, you know? And do you think that that's not there in Kerry at the moment? Because they look, the panel looks strong. Like, is it, what, uh, what's I'm not sure. 
Yeah, it's not, I'm not sure, Bernard. I mean, you know, you know yourself when you're not in there and you, you're only hearing things, you know, and you don't want to, you know, I don't want to speculate on it. It's easy to speculate when when team when carrier when teams lose, you know, and, and people say, oh, well, it's not working, that's not working, you know, and teams have off days, as you know, Bernard, you know, and that's what happens. Like, and, um, I, I think they've done a great job, Kerry, in in in, in basically it's a brand new system, the way they've been able to come through development, win under twenty one, win minors, you know, Kerry, Kerry will be fine. You know, I think they'll be okay, and I think they've done a better job with it now than they would have, we we'll say, in the late nineties. And that team that's came through, that those, you know, the O'Shea's and all the and Galvin's and all those, and Declan Sullivan, all those coming through. I think they've done a way better job now at it, and they've learned their lessons about um, how to get that team ethos and, and how to get galvanise it because, um, you know, Kerry people want success, boy, and 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 you know, it's 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 great. It's it's a great expectation to have in your shoulder, and because. Kerry, every young fella playing, whether they're talented or not, are given a Kerry jersey and they want to play for Kerry, whether they can or not. That's what they want to do. And we're very lucky that way, you know, in, in Kerry. And um, that's what drives the talent so much. Yeah. You know? and, um, yeah. As far as what's happening right now, it's like I said, it's a bit difficult, you know. Um, yeah. I'm still close to it's people there, but... It's hard to question, yeah. I suppose last week I, I would have said that they were going to be close to winning all Ireland. It's easy to say things are wrong when something, when a result goes like that. It's, a, it's difficult circumstances at the moment. But I suppose what I'd love to get into... You know, Bernard, the expectations are, you know, and, that, and that's coming back to being prepared properly and, and, and you know, having that, that age of, you know what, we're going to absolutely demoralise Cork and that's as simple as that and this is how we're going to do it. You know, and not having that sometimes it can happen and carry oh watch the watch them they're coming for you or, you know you might slip up or there's a there's a banana skin here you know you as you know yourself having that real strong mind mindset of being you know relentless that you're going to get it done no matter what and it's not a, a cockiness but it's it's a confidence in knowing that you're going to get it done and um you know that uh, that i think wasn't there i i think in what i've I know a lot of it's I'm hearing you know it's yeah. but from what i saw it, it just weren't ruthless enough in actually getting the job done yeah no it's fair it's fair. <clears throat> but come here, um, I have the joy of playing alongside you in the international rules. You mentioned it there. And uh, like the, the international rules sometimes gets a bit of a stick, but I absolutely loved that I got the, got the chance to captain my country in 2015, like something I never even captained Dublin. It was massive for me. And I got to obviously um, get out for a few points with the, with the likes of uh, Goodsy and, and Sam Gilbert and these guys with yourself. And like I had some of the best memories ever. It was a good story uh, the, the night we had in Listowel. I don't know if you ever talked to you about it since, but when when yourself, myself, and uh, hey, go on, hang on, man, hang on. We can edit this, can't we? <laughs> we can edit this. If it doesn't. We can edit this if if you're not comfortable with it. But no, we um, <laughs> we were in we we're in John B's for the lock in, and uh, and yourself and we we're all, all all well behaved, and yourself and Tommy headed off and left per stories. Dave Moore and uh, wandering around uh, John B's. So I said, right, come on. I put him around the arm around the shoulder and brought him home. And I put him, just threw him into one of the spare rooms in my mum's place down in the stall. And he obviously didn't know what was going on. He woke up the next morning and came out of the room sheepishly walking down. He walked into the kitchen and saw me, my mother. And he goes, please be Mrs. Brogan. My mum goes, how are you doing? Are you young, young, young Ogie? <laughs> so I'd given her the heads up. So, yeah, so th those type of things, like I, I love getting out, uh, having yeah. a few pints, meeting the likes of yourselves and, and the different county players and, like I love those days, and you played most most years. I'm sure you would have loved those international rule days and trips yeah. across here, yeah. and when they came to you over in Australia. The best man, the best, the best memories I have. You know, one of the, some of the best of, of the trips that we had. Um, you know, and, and as you understand, a lot of it is you, you know, you, you're in the season and you're you're you're, you're built on you're built on the crap out of each other, you know, mm. um, and in your you you your way of playing for your country, and um, you know, I. I it's right up there for me as well, right up there as far as what I've done in my career, playing for my country and, and playing. And I'm, I'm glad that I got the opportunity to be able to do it, you know, and that's where I'd hate, hate for it to not be given to footballers and not have the opportunity to do it. But some of the stories, man, as far as what we've done and got up to were unbelievable, you know, and, um, you know, I, I, how long have you got? And we certainly <laughs> need to edit it, but it, it builds friendships, you know, and I, I remember a, a game we played in, um, in, and I had three teammates playing for, um, for Australia against me in Crow Park, and it was 2006, I think it was. Which one it was? I'm in Dublin, and um, and I played a good game, the first one. And um, a couple of the boys that taught me, um, Adam Schneider and, and uh, Big Baz Barry Hall, had said, "Look, man, they've got your name on the board, and they're coming for you, boy. There's a target on your head." And um, so I was <laughs> ready to go. You know, once the game started, and um, 
Um, I didn't see this fellas came from behind me, Andrew Ambly from West Coast Eagles, and he's just flattened me in, fr- in the back right behind me, and I've gone down on my back, and I've kind of get up, and there's a bit of a schmozzle, and, and you know, um, Kieran McDonald, you know, from Mayo, the best left footers I've ever seen, um, is, is at half forward, and he's coming in, and he's jumping on top of fellas, and, you know, he had the long blonde hair, and he comes out looking like a sheepdog, just a scraggy old sheepdog covered in hair, like all the blonde hair everywhere, and, um, he was the one that came in and backed up, and and from then on, man, we we've been very close. You know, we connect and uh, built a strong relationship. Or there's something that's just happened on the football field that he had my back. You know, and he he came in over the top. And the same time, I remember I was kind of those punches being thrown, or what handbags being thrown, probably. And um, I grabbed someone, and it was actually Ryan O'Keefe, one of my, one of my own teammates in Sydney. We've kind of we've kind of bought on that one, you know, and uh, we stopped. But, um, yeah, it, the, 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 the friendship. I used to love connecting back with the, the, yeah. the, the Irish boys more so because I didn't have the, the ability to do it, you know. Um, I built a strong relationship with Star through it, you know. Uh, you know, we played a lot and we obviously know each other and whatnot, but, um, you know, you connect a lot with the Kerry boys also. But, yeah, as you um, say, when you go to war with someone and you've uh, big Barry Hall coming after you, it's good to have a few pals like Kerry McDonald. And uh, I don't know if you heard her. Uh, our good pal Graham Garrity uh, was sick there recently. We hear he's coming out the, the good, the good side of it. Who, um, who put us put 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 it up to the Australians several times as well. So hopefully he's uh, he's fitting well and, and, and continues his recovery. But uh, mm. the AFL, um, I watched obviously the, the grand final and Zach and, and Mark been involved and I hadn't watched it in a while. Obviously, um, w- obviously watched a lot of your journeys over the years, having, keeping a close eye on it. The game has really evolved for me. Like they're they're all six foot five. They're like it's very little open open play and um, ball. It's very kind of <laughs> rook central. I just couldn't get over the kind of physicality and the kind of the 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 way maybe it's just becoming a kind of a. I just couldn't. I just didn't see much open play. Maybe it was the, the grand final and the big occasion. Yeah, Has the game went like that over the last number of yeah. years? It's going to happen at home, you know. And it's funny you say that because I, I see an awful lot of what happens now. Obviously, been in the coaching game myself. I see a lot of what happens here. Models of it taking back to Gaelic football and, and taking home, you know, and taking over, you know. And, um, yeah. it, the press is huge in, in our in, in AFL and has been for nearly seven, eight years now. The press is what I mean is all 18 players, 18 players in the field in AFL. They'll all be in one quarter of the field. If the ball is in, you say, let's wow. corner back. Mm-hmm. They'll have a whole lot of squeezing the ground and actually trying to stop the team from coming through the coming through and they're trying to it's a, like a basketball press it's it's that's where it's came from an american football press but actually pressing and they're trying to stop the flow of the game and making the game congested because um they're big in their stats and numbers here but the top two defensive teams in the competition if you finish in the, in the ladder the end of the end of the regular season before you went to the playoffs whoever finished the top two in defense have won 18 the last 19 premiership so yeah. teams know then well you need to defend you need to make it messy and um, and that's what's that's and I see lots of the technical components going back um, because there is obviously influences here that go back and, and, and there's been coaches learning all the time and uh, and it's something you know I've I've been proclaiming to a lot of Kerry people about beating the Dubs is pressing the crap out of that kick out you know and pressing it for a long time and to the extent I don't know if you remember Bernard when we I was coaching the Australian team in international rules with. Yeah. With Alex Clarkson, where we had we had our goalkeeper standing on the forty-five meter line, yeah. and we had all players pressing up, and we won the game. And um, you were standing inside in your own many a time, yeah, yeah, yeah. and and just couldn't get the ball through, like, mm. um, you know. And it's, it's it's a it's a technique that can it, it does need a lot of practice. You know, you got a lot of time to actually perfect it because you know where your teammate is in relation to your teammate in your space and whatnot. So I get a bit yeah. technical there. No, I totally agree with you. When you look at the evolution of AFL and you look at the, the, the physical nature of the, 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 the noughties and the early 2000s of the Barry Halls, Ben Cousins, these lads who are just physically big. And then you look at Tyrone and, and Armagh in the early noughties about that physicality. And then it's gone into the uh, AFL. And uh, you've told me before about some of the, the pre-season training during your era where it moved into more of a running game and, phys- and, and, and athleticism. Obviously, GA has gone like that. It's about the Brian Fentons. These lads are going up and down the pitch, the wing forwards, Paddy, Paddy Durkins, these, these players. Now it's gone into this press. And, and Dublin, we, we've done bits of it and teams are start, starting to do it. I think, is that, is that what the next kind of iteration is? Is that real full court press? Because it takes a lot of practice. It takes a lot of clarity well, about your absolutely. role. Yeah, it's, it's hard, man, because do you know what will happen, Bernard? Like The ball will get through and they'll score goals. You know, but the, the ideology behind it is that if you stop it getting through enough, you're going to score more than the opposition. Now, it looks bad when it gets through because they've got no defenders on them. 
and it gets through. But if your system's strong enough, now that takes a lot of confidence as a manager and a, as, as a as a coach to do it, you know. Um, you know, and, and I'm talking to Blue in the face, talking to Star about it, you know, when we when when um when we were playing when you're playing Dublin, so we were playing you three years ago, you know, and it was both pressing it and um and aiming aiming did it in the first half, you know. Um and as far as that surprise factor. Um, but I, I, I have no doubt someone, someone will grab the bull by the horns and, and, and do it, you know, and have success with it. And, and we saw with, you know, the players getting behind the ball um, and, and um, playing the puke yeah. football as that's bland with that. Yeah. But you know, it, it, it will change. It'll break. You know, it's just have someone to have the confidence to actually break it and, and, and go with it. And because um, it's only going to trickle down to club teams and whatnot yeah. if you do see that, you know. You know. I think you're right. You're Which seeing not- this. Yeah, you're seeing this, this. It's all built off stats. You see, even in soccer, you look at like um, Liverpool push pressing forward. Like every game now is obviously because as the games evolved, stats and these data these data points come in. And um, I think you're, I think you're dead right. Uh, lastly, on the on the AFL, like I, I saw a thing. Donegal Boyle put a put a something in the paper a couple of weeks ago, and it was around the amount of players that went over the last number of years, young guys to the on the, the the experiment project. And I know you were heavily involved in a lot of them. Not not many, or only a few of them actually went on to actually play um, actual uh, championship football. What mm. what is what is what is let's say players? What are AFL looking for, or what are what are these players not having? That it isn't getting them over the line to actually play because they're obviously great athletes and they're they're the best of sometimes the counties here, but they don't don't seem to always get over the line. Why, why is that? Yeah, it's a good question, man. Um, it, it's 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 not easy. Like it's you know when I was doing the recruiting stuff, you know, it was the first thing I'd say to the you know, 18, 19, 20 year olds standing in front of me and say, look, I promise you the world here, but it's highly unlikely you're going to make it. You know. There's, there's three players that have played over 150 games of AFL football, which is over 10 years. You know, um, it's 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 hard. You're, you're coming from a, you're coming from a background, obviously that's that's, a, that's different, and you're going into a professional environment, and a majority of them come out as as big fish at home. You know, and then you come out, man, and you're on the bottom of the pile at an AFL club. You've got no idea what's going on. Your ego takes a hit. You know, and and as you know, being a sports person, a lot of your stuff is about your ego and your bravado and how you can fake it yourself about how good you are. But when you're in, when you're in an environment where you're actually not good at it, and and you're away from home, and there's other factors that are brought into play, it's 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 hard. It's hard to do, you know. And people, the game's different. No matter what people say to you, they're different. The skills that are transferable, yes, but the games are totally different. Like, let's be honest. You know, they're extremely different. There's transferable things that are part of the game, but it's different. And when you've got someone that's coming in at 18, 19 into a game, that these are fellas who've been playing it their whole life and they're, they're professional and to break it, it, it's it's difficult, you know. But what we are showing, we've got a capability that we can do it. What we do need is more more to actually try and break through and, and more Zach's playing 200 games of AFL football and Mark O'Connor, who's in the leadership group at Geelong team playing the grand final. He's only three years in his, his career, you know, so... Um, but it, it's again, look, it's 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 a hard one to answer directly for you, man. But there's there's parts of 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 it that's difficult because of the the, the outside influence of of being away from family, obviously, and, and the welfare. But but the fact that that's a totally different game yeah. is, is 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 another factor. And is it is it down to physical attributes? Is it down to mental? What, like what? No, 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 no. I don't think it's I don't think it's physical at all. I don't think it's the you know we, we're competitive. It's, we're 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 competitive, man. We know how to fight, like, and we know how to get get the job done if we have to. You know, um, I just think you're you're chasing the eight ball an awful lot. You're just chasing it, you know, and you need a club that's willing to stay with you and back you in and, and say, well, there are going to be mistakes. It's going to be a long journey, and you need a club that's got a really strong program. I mean, it's really the, the better clubs that are shown, uh, the top four or six clubs, that they can do it because they're willing to actually spend the money and the time to actually invest in the player. Yeah. Whereas a lot of players here, man, they got one, two years of the club, see you later. It's not even two years. It's one year at 18 and if you're there because they just got the abundance of talent that are there, you know? Yeah. Um, that You need the better clubs to be able to invest in it and, and hang tough and find fight for you, you know? Yeah, and obviously there's been several, uh, as I'm sure he, he, you know well, that the, the, the ladies' football has gone across. I think it's amazing, and I know you've taken heat over the years about different counties mm-hmm. not been happy with you um, offering a, a professional career for a player, but what, what an opportunity for a young guy or a girl to go across there and play sport in a professional environment, to do what you love every day. Obviously, to, to, to use our GA skills to, to bring us somewhere, I'm, 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 I think it's amazing to, to offer it. Obviously, no county team wants to lose, lose their the top players, but 
for the individual, what an amazing thing. Do you, th do you think that Ireland will still be looked at as a, a hunting ground or a watering hole for future AFL? I know that the, the ladies is only growing. Um, the, the men's well, do you still think there's confidence in, in, in Ireland for, for future players? The main criticism I got, Bernard White, was, was not taking more dubs, actually, the past five, <laughs> past five or six years. You know, it would have been a different story. I would have been a, an icon. I would have put a statue of me lying in the store. <laughs> Like taking a few more dubs, took a few, few more dubs off, but um, yeah, look, it's going to happen because, like I said to you, the more Mark O'Connors can do it, you know, and um, it, we can do it, and the, the proof is there that we can do it. Now, the numbers are, are stacked against you. We talk about again, it's big on numbers, but there is players that are doing it and having big influences on, in, in clubs, you know, um, and certainly the female. The female avenue, and I think, I don't know whether it's because the game here, the female game is not as professional um, for as long as the AFL men's game. I'm not sure. Um, what's the major difference in, in the two that the, the females seem to be adapting to the to the transition quicker mm. than the male counterparts in AFL transition? You know, And we're seeing that with the girls being very successful coming out here straight away and playing within a few months. Mm. That's unheard of in 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 in. in now, maybe, and it's not maybe, I also think the talent pool is a lot less for the female talent right now in AFL as far as the standard-wise because it's still a young young baby as far as it picking up and getting it, getting there. You know, It's going to be a beast because the following this is is going through the roof. The AFL membership is, is enormous. The, the, the following has is huge, you know. Um, but it's, it's, it certainly is going to continue. Um, and even in this current environment, you know, with... With, with COVID and whatnot, clubs are still going to go and, and, and try and try and find a way to be, um, you know, to get an edge because that's what professional high performance teams do. Mm -hmm. They try and get an edge wherever they can, you know, whether that's getting an Irish player, whether it's getting a player that plays basketball in the United States, whether it's, you know, whatever it is, cutting edge technology or cutting edge sports science, that's what high performance teams do. And, and AFL is no different than any other professional sport. They're going to do that, you know, and, mm -hmm. um, and it is, look, I was absolutely joy to be, mm -hmm. to, be able to offer it to young people. It never really bothered me that people say, "Oh, you, are taking talent from from Ireland." You know, we're losing talent to, to other codes anyway. And, and you know what? If I, uh, I'm glad someone gave me the opportunity to do it, and I'm not going to stop trying to give young people an opportunity. Uh, was my mindset uh, to try and bring them in in Ireland, the Kelly footballers certainly uh, the opportunity to be professional footballers. You know, and, um, albeit if the game was professional, I you know, I wouldn't have left for sure. You know, that's but that's. That's part of. That's another argument, isn't it? You know. Yeah, yeah. No, it's amazing. Um, and for, what for yourself? Um, I know you've you've had you've had sport in your DNA since 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 you were born, and you were lucky enough to play um, AFL for a long, long time, and come home and win your All Ireland, uh, and stay involved, I suppose, in in that kind of um, that project to, to to give that avenue for for young men and women to uh, to play AFL. What's the what's the future hold for Ty Canelli? I suppose um, everyone so we don't hear enough from, from you in, in Ireland. Um, we're all we always like to hear how you're getting on with that. For people who are interested, uh, what's the future hold for you and and Nicole and the gang? Or are you, are you, is Sydney bound for for long haul or any any time coming home to us soon? Or what's what's the plans? Who knows, man? Um, I'll tell you this: three small children. It's not easy. Um, but uh, yeah, when I finished up the recruiting, you know, about four years ago, you know, um, and I. I I went coaching, you know, and I started, um, I went on the coaching journey and I started going, but well, maybe this is where I want to go. Um, and COVID and, and a few things have just kind of went, you know what, I don't want to move. At, at the minute with a young family, we didn't want to move in this city. Um, so I, I left the club, uh, what, only a month ago now, uh, as, a, as a coach and I took up a job as a director of sport at a, uh, at a, a school here. Brilliant. A major, major school, which brilliant. is brilliant. Um, Albeit, who knows for how long and what, what. Um, it's just right now, it's just not right for uh, for us to move. You know, it's just difficult for us families, but as you know, man, we're children. But as far as going home, never say never. Mm -hmm. I've always said that. Uh, it's been 20 years. <laughs> but uh, it's uh, it's been it's been a wild journey, man. You know, the game has given me so much. And I'll go back to the, the original question you asked me, man. It wasn't for the people in the store that taught me everything about mm -hmm. uh, it, uh, res respect and responsibility about who I am, where I come from, be proud of it, and, and it drove me an awful lot to be uh, to have the success that I had as a footballer and now as a coach. Mm. 
Well, thanks a million, Tyg. I think, uh, yeah, your new role as a director of sport, I think the, that group of young guys and girls will have, um, will have the right mindset and, and, and will, will, will only benefit from your advice and, your, and your, your energy and your passion, I suppose, for sport. So for me, um, this is my first podcast, I really appreciate your time. Um, I'm not sure what time of the day it is in Sydney. It's probably late, late in the evening. So uh, I know you have a busy family. Morning, you know what I'm doing for you. Huh? It's four in the morning. You don't even know what I'm doing for you. Getting <laughs> Well, you're probably up anyway, going for your morning run by the looks of you. Um, but no, thanks a million. And uh, hopefully we'll see you soon. And I uh, appreciate your time. Anytime, Bono boy. Thanks, Cheers, man. my man. Thank you for tuning in to episode one of the Bernard Brogan podcast, brought to you by Super Value, proud sponsors of the 2020 Championship. I'm delighted to announce that Tommy Bow will be our guest on episode two next week. Please keep an eye on OTB channels for updates. The Bernard Brogan Podcast and OTB Sports brought to you by Super Value, proud sponsors of the GEA All-Ireland Football Championship for over 11 years. <laughs>